when I was a little boy, I used to enjoy reading fiction, and it was um, and not until I grew up that I actually learned that there are actual facts in life that you have to get your head around. And so I just enjoyed listening to a recitation of the fiction of the constitutional legitimacy of the uh, sovereignty and democracy of this land. So here's my intro. Two years ago, the protest at Parliament reminded us that democracy is a fiction only made real by the consent of the governed. It reminded us that for democracy to work, Ideals like truth, fairness and justice have to be real. We were also reminded what happens when that consent is withdrawn. When citizens no longer believe that ideas like uh, like truth and justice and fairness are actually being upheld, the fiction breaks down, consent is withdrawn and chaos ensues. Now I start with those ideas, gentlemen, and those observations because truth, fairness and justice are what's at stake for us here tonight and for our nation. It is a historical fact. Listen to this. It's a historical fact that every non maori person Every democratic or civil institution in this land is only here because the sovereign tribes of Aotearoa and the British Empire reached agreement on the terms of their existence here in 1840. And what were those terms? Act would have us believe those Rangatira in 1840 surrendered their authority to Hobson and his queen. In exchange, they were permitted to keep their lands and treasures, were granted the rights of British citizenship, and that total surrender of chiefly tribal mana and power was obtained. Over 100,000 fiercely independent warlike people by few officials, some missionaries, without military support or compensation. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a damn good trick to me. Helmut Modlik, a German Maori with attitude. Psst. Shh. Thursday, the 6th of February, 1840. Don't mention the treaty. The Brits won. Psst. Shh. Monday the 7th of May 1945. Don't mention the war. The Brits won again. Brief history of facts for the benefit of Helmut Modlik. 1. Maori are not indigenous to New Zealand. 2. New Zealand was not a Maori peaceful paradise before the colonizers arrived. 3. Maori were not peace-loving gardeners and fishermen before the colonizers arrived. 4. Maori were brutal violent warring savage cannibals who murdered their neighbors and children, then ate them. The colonizers halted this vile ritual, saving thousands of Maori lives over the past 200 years. 5. Maori were exceptionally fortunate the French, or Spanish, or Portuguese or Belgians didn't arrive on New Zealand's savage shores before the British, because there would be no Maori descendants living today. 6. Maori rather than being annihilated by the British war machine. Ceded sovereignty to the British conquerors and that agreement was fully documented in a peaceful treaty between the warring tribes and the Crown. 7. Colonization, whilst not perfect, has been absolutely fantastic for Maori. 8. Maori life expectancy has improved drastically from around 30 years to over 70 years, all thanks to the colonization of Maori by the British. 9. People who identify as Maori today are typically 85% or more, non-Maori ethnicity, so clearly Maori have not only accepted the colonizers, they have blended in together exceptionally well. This action alone, fully supports the preference by the inhabitants of having one country with one people by default, in practice. 10. The vast majority of New Zealanders, including the majority of self-identified Maori, want one country, with one people and one vote. They also want the treaty principles defined into law by means of a public referendum, followed by a legally binding bill. For the sake of the country and all of its people, this action needs to be implemented as soon as possible. Racism in New Zealand needs to be addressed with urgency and resolved with expediency. 11. Waitangi Day, should be New Zealand Day, a time to celebrate one country with one people, and one vote. Waitangi Day should be a day of peaceful celebration, that the rest of the world would admire and applaud. The United Nations can take a hike. Helmut Modlik. A German Maori with bad attitude, bad memory, bad knowledge of history, bad agenda, and a bad ideology. A debater who is 100% wrong, wrong and wrong. Thank you David Seymour. Geraint, on behalf of Funner Imp.